All right, guys, we are almost there. So close, I can feel it. So in the last lesson, we've already started sending images. So in the last lesson, we've already started sending our own images to IBM Bluemix, and we're getting back the classification results. So in this lesson, we're going to narrow down those classification results because it comes back as a huge array with loads of data. We just want to know what it thinks it is. And we want to check if any of those things that it thinks it is, is a hot dog. And if it is, then we're gonna tell people that it is a hot dog. And if it's not, then we're gonna say it's not a hot dog. I wish I could do a Jin Yang accent. I really do. But unfortunately, I'm quite limited in the uh, accent department. So you're just going to have to bear with this accent for now. So as you can see in the output, we're actually getting quite a lot of data and it's pretty messy here. The only parts that we actually want is the classification. So in this case, you know, is it a tree? Is it a citrus? Is it a lemon? Is it a plant? That is what we want to know because essentially at the end of the day, we want an array that holds all the items that it could be. And if a hot dog exists in that array, then we want to be able to tell the user, you've got a hot dog there. What I need to do is I need to pull out these pieces of data and put them into their own array. So in order to do that, I'm going to go up to the top of my file and I'm gonna create a new array called um, classification results. And it is going to be of type um, an array of strings, and I'm going to set it equal to an empty array at the beginning. Now, if I scroll down to here, instead of printing out the classified images, I want to print out all of the classifications that we're getting back. So in order to do that, I first have to go a few levels down and tap into the classes. So let classes equal classified images dot images dot first uh, unwrap that dot uh, classifiers dot first unwrap that as well dot classes okay so now classes is going to essentially hold everything after this point so from here on that is going to be the classes and we have to dig a little bit deeper inside classes in order to bring out these classifications. And we also need the help of a for loop. So I'm going to write a for index in less than classes dot count. Um, I want to loop through these classes and I want to append to my array that I created earlier on. So it's called classified classify classification results dot append and the new element I want to add on to it is classes tapping into the item at the current index oh there's a typo there that should start from zero from the current index and I'm going to tap into its classification and I'm going to add that to my classification results so because we're currently inside a closure, we of course have to add the self keyword in front of everything that we want to use. So now let's print out this classification result array and see what it looks like. Okay, so let's pick an image and let's go with this one. Let's see what we get back. Okay, great, perfect. So we've got our array that contains all the classifications that IBM Watson thinks it could be. So barley, grain, food product, food, broom, beard, grass. I have no idea what that is. Grass, herb, plant, dandelion. Okay, so we've got quite a few items. And now in order to see if it is a hot dog or not, what we need to do is check if there is an item called hot dog inside this entire array. So let's keep that print statement so that we can see what we're getting back from our API calls. And we're just going to write an if statement. If self dot classification results um, contains the word hot dog, i.e. if any of these results inside this array is coming back as a hot dog, 
Then we want to change this um, navigation bar up here to read hot dog. And we can tap into that by writing self dot navigation item, I believe, dot title equals hot dog. Alternatively, else, if that word doesn't exist, if we didn't get back a classification called hot dog, then we want to say self dot navigation item dot title equals not hot dog. All right, so that will work, but it's not really the best way of going about it because currently we're inside a uh, closure. So this part, everything between these two curly braces only gets triggered once we've gotten a result back from IBM Watson. So in order to change something that is user interface related, best practice is getting back to the main thread. So we're currently in the background thread and we want to get back to the main thread to update our user interface. So to do that, we're going to use a Grand Central Dispatch. So I'm going to write dispatch Q dot main dot async. And where it says code, instead we're going to put this in here. And we're going to do the same thing down here. Dispatch Q dot main dot async. And we're going to drag this line where we're changing the user interface. And I'm going to go into the editor and I'm just going to re indent everything so that all our curly braces and parentheses are exactly where they need to be. So it's looking a bit cleaner. All right, so we should probably give this a go. Now, of course, in the simulator example images, there isn't a image of a hot dog. Um, sadly, Apple didn't think that we would have the need for it. So I'm going to have to use the camera functionality in my uh, in my phone. So I'm going to change that saved photos album once more to camera and I'm going to launch the app on my phone. All right, so our seafood app is built on screen and I'm just going to head over to Chrome where I've got a image of a hot dog loaded up and I'm just going to take an image of the hot dog and say use photo. So now this data is being sent over to Watson and hot dog, there we go. So it knows that it's a hot dog, brilliant. So now let's try that with something that is probably not a hot dog. Let's try it with my mouse. All right, so we've run into a bug. It's still telling us that it's hot dog, but as everybody knows that it's probably not a hot dog. So if we have a look in our console, you can see that down here, you've got something that looks like computer mouse, electronic device, device. So that's identifying what that item is. But as you can see, we're printing out this entire array and we've actually just appended the new results onto the previous results. So we have to correct that in order to fix this bug. So to do this, all we have to do is before the for loop, we need to set the uh, classification results to um, an empty array once more. So now if I run my app again, you'll see that those results are no longer being tagged to the end of the previous array and we're not getting that erroneous report of it being a hot dog. All right, so let's try the same thing that we did before. Hot dog, use photo, what do we get? One, two, three, hot dog, great. So let's try now with the mouse. Use photo, not hot dog. There we go. So we fixed that bug and it's now able to identify hot dog and not hot dog. So well done. That is essentially the basics of the hot dog app. You have managed to identify using a neural net um, that's provided by IBM Watson um, whether if an image can be classified as a hot dog or not a hot dog. And we'd like to think that you're well on your way to being acquired by Periscope. So in the next lesson, I want to tidy things up a little bit. I just want to add some UI improvements and also to make our app look a little bit more like the, the app that the Silicon Valley team actually came out with. So we're going to add a Twitter share button to get Twitter's attention. And we're also going to change some colors and change some fonts in order to make it look um, as beautiful as we can. 
So I'll see you on the next lesson.